welcome to the channel. This is another video in a series of how to start A. We're here with a good friend of mine, Matt. I've known Matt for about 18 years now. I know Matt from around town. I know him from the gyms. And Matt's actually been using me for my services as a car painter since I was 19. So happens to be my longest serving customer. I know Matt as the life and soul of the gym. Uh, we could be up the gym at six o'clock in the morning and Matt's always having a laugh and shouting across the place. And Matt is quite a popular guy in our local community. And I think that's what's helping him with his uh, business. So he's got an award winning business called Vines Construction. And that's what we're here to discuss today, how we started and how it's going. So welcome, Matt. Thanks for having us today. Thanks for taking the time out. I know you're a busy man, uh, but I just want to start with, you know, how did you start? How did your working life start as a, as a young lad? Well, first and foremost, thanks for having me on, uh, on your new YouTube channel. It's an honour. Um, so, yeah, it just started, as, as you know, as most, as most sort of career paths start, as in a paper round, you know, paper round sort of 12, 13, 14 years of age. Loving the Christmas tips, that's probably the best part, not going to lie. But um, no, it was nice to take the old girls their paper and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and then went on to doing a bit of market work, as you do, when he was allowed to go in there at sort of 15, just before he was actually allowed to start work at 16, because then guys obviously were, uh, were quite chilled. So yeah, started there one day and uh, basically got a pole in the head setting up, asked the governor for a sort of a five pound sub, went and got a McDonald's, I like my food, um, and then never actually went back because I had a huge lump on my head. Um, but so that, that was, uh, yeah, that, that was that. And never then been, I- Never been the same since. No, no, never <laughs> been the same since, exactly that, cheers Craig. Um, and then went on to, the, uh, to work for the, uh, the family construction company. Um, literally, I just remember one day, that's for my dad and my uncle. Um, Coming back around the corner, we was digging out the footings by hand because that's how you had to do it back then. And uh, yeah, we was unloading some wheelbarrows into the back of the uh, in the big, big lorry. I come back round and they were literally completely naked in the trench, just with their work boots on. <laughs> and I was like, "Wow, I hope we know these customers." But um, <laughs> I think they did. I think it was a family friend, obviously. But then it just made me think, you know, you can have a you can have a right crack in, in the building trade. This this is a bit of me, you know. This is that's a bit where of me. you started. That's where you stayed. And then I believe you went to do an apprenticeship. Do you want to talk about that? Because I know it's a bit of a hard time for you, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, like I said. I enjoyed my food. I was uh, I was quite a large child, we'll say, um, and teenager. And basically, my uncle, he, uh, he, he was amazing. He helped me right out. He got us the sort of the interview. I was up against quite a few people, so that was quite nerve wracking. But yeah, we done our prep, and I, and I managed to land the, land the apprenticeship, which I was really proud of at the time. Um, and then basically, we started. You know, I got to know the guys because they were a great bunch. There was loads of different carpenters you go out and work with. You know, you get put with each one each day, and there'd be different tasks to do. But um, then I had to go to college. It was uh, it was quite a long trip to college because it was I know it was only in Luton, but you had to get the bus. It took like two hours either way. But I remember getting there, starting to get to know people and things like that. But the thing was, I was only 16 and I was going there with sort of, you know, 25, 30 year old guys. Um, and, you know, it was all right at the start. But as it went on, um, I started to experience some severe bullying, sort of chisels thrown at me. It was quite horrific, if I'm honest with you. But you know, I know everyone's been through bullying. It's just one of those things. It's not one of those things, but you know, a lot of people go through it. And I just remember, you know, getting, getting, the, getting the bus in some days and, and being that anxious and that scared and worried about going in. I'd get all the way to Luton, do the trip there, and then I'd phone up the, the company and say, sorry, I'm, I'm ill today, you know, and just make out I couldn't go in. Just didn't want to be there. No, with, literally, with was just, yeah, it was just not nice. But hey ho, pick so, yourself up. So what? No, where did you go after that? Because you, you basically quit that, didn't you? You dropped yeah. out of that. But so, did that mean yeah. you quit your job as well? Yes, yeah, I had to, I had to leave thing. the job. I had to leave that. I, I did speak to them about potentially carrying on without doing that, and I explained the situation, but because it was, you know, it was an apprenticeship package, that, that's, what, that's what was part of it. So I decided to make the big call and leave that. Um, and then a friend of mine um, used to work for a building company locally, so I started doing a bit of, you know, a bit of labouring for a couple of carpenters that was quite enjoyable. But as you do back then, you're living for the weekend. Um, and basically, yeah, I, I, it didn't have my heart and soul into it, basically. I was just, you know, I was going to work and I never really progressed like I should have done. And then I got an opportunity to go and work as, as a hog carrier for some bricklayers that I know on a big site. And the money was just too good to turn down because at that time, I'd just got a mortgage with my brother, I was 19. Um, and yeah, I needed to pay the bills. What, what so, sort of money did you get paid for that? Well, as we know, um, yeah, like apprentices don't pay too well, so it was a big jump up, you know, it was £100 a day at that time, and that was sort of, you know, 20 years ago. That's decent money for, what, 18, 19? Yeah, for 19, yeah. That's decent. I think I was on about 460 quid a month as an apprentice, and that was tough, tough times working 
40, 45 hours a week. So what, what, what else was going on in your life around that time? So you said you had a mortgage, you young man, like partying and yeah, yeah, having yeah. a good time. Exactly that. So so that happened. Um, basically, what happened after that was, it was like, you know, I spent that about six months, well, maybe a year or two on, on the hod. It was very labour intensive. You was earning your money, definitely. But it, it, was a, it was a great job, obviously, when the sun was shining, it was a lot better. But uh, then the Eastern Europeans come over and, you know, they, they work very hard for, for less money. You know, they would just kind of get their foot in the door over here. And that's when, you know, we got the news. It was crazy. We was literally getting cut from 100 to 60 pounds a day. Right. So it was a huge, huge knock. And, and I looked at one of my friends there, um, I won't name any names, but it looks at one of my good close friends there who I'd you know, done a lot with and he was trained to be a carpenter as well before he came on the hod with me. And we looked at each other and we went, you know what, we're not going to do this anymore. Let's go straight down the college. We literally got in his car and he drove us straight back down to the same college. So I had a little bit of, you know, I was a little bit anxious about it. Yeah. Um, but went to the same college and managed to enrol in, a, in an evening course. So I needed to earn the money in the days still to pay the mortgage. So decided to do an evening course two nights a week. Um, and then get the MVQ that we needed in carpentry and joinery. And how old were you about around that time? About 23 then. And then, so you were in night college. What was you doing for work if you took yourself off the I managed to go back to work with the first initial builders that I was working with, the local company. Yeah. Um, and because they were carpentry based, that's what attracted me. Because a lot of builders, you know, are different, you know, they have different professions of what their the project manager is, but they were more predominantly carpentry based. And I enjoyed that, you know, and the, the, the satisfaction from pitching a roof is just, for me, and, and the smell of wood, is, as stupid as that sound, I remember a college teacher saying to me once, but the smell of wood when you're cutting it like an oak or something like mm. that, it just really drew me to the carpentry side of it. So, yeah, went back with them, worked with them on a, day, on a daily basis, and then went to the evening and done the night college. So you started learning the ropes, and then you went on to garage conversions. Exactly that. That was also another big, uh, a big, big stepping stone for me, because... Oh, I always, I've always struggled with confidence, I'm sure we all do, and confidence is the biggest thing in life personally. Once you've got that or, you, or some of it, it, you know, life seems to flow a lot better and, and everything seems to work a lot better. So I went and I took on this role uh, as sort of a project manager for a garage conversion franchise. We have a lovely, another lovely local, build, local building company, um, and he was great. The guy there was brilliant. He taught me the ropes, and it's like it's just a process like anything, you know. Break it down, do it in sections, get the floor in, and that's when I started learning, running, and organising, you know, the trades. Right. So the, about the, your mid twenties, you were in management, you're yeah, learning the ropes, doing garage conversions because they were quite quite a thing back then that's what people were going for exactly that because of a minimal disruption we turn them around in sort of two to three weeks they weren't stupidly expensive and you know whatever we spend on property goes on the on the property of the house anyway and it was a lot of sort of it, back then it was a lot more you know kids playroom dining rooms things like that yeah, whereas yeah. now home offices are the thing yeah, yeah, <laughs> as yeah. we know um and what did that lead to after that you got to work on a big project it, it, it was mega. Um, literally, we hand built everything. Like the, the, the kitchen, like they, they got a quote for the kitchen. I'm not going to name figures, but yeah, it was crazy money. And he said, Look, what about if house. I get some, yeah, what about if I get some silver? Yeah, literally, you could buy a house they wanted to charge for the kitchen and the show kitchen. Show kitchen, who has it? That's how the other half live. Um, but so we hand built the kitchen from Silver Birch Price, shipped in from Sweden. We literally dovetailed every every drawer corner it was crazy but that was by hand as well by a jig and a router so and then we'd literally sand down the uh the silver ply like a 5,000 grit sandpaper I didn't even know you'd get 5,000 grit sandpaper wow. so okay. it literally felt as smooth as a baby's you know what so it was just it was just a crazy experience we hand built every bath I'd never done that before then they were all clad in stone we hand built every door 20 bathrooms like it was insane the bowling alley bathrooms. like hand built the bowling alley hand built the, the bowling alley was hand built it was just crazy panic room probably shouldn't say that but yeah hand built the panic room and also uh, the, the cool, one of the cool things for me obviously the trophy cabinets were very cool and seeing all the trophies I've got a few photos that will never be shown, um, but it was more like the cigar cabinet that we had to build, like with all the uh, the climate control and stuff like that. That was just I never, I don't think I'll ever get to do that again. So Unbelievable. It was just, yeah, it was just a crazy time. How long was that project? That was a few years because yeah. he literally, I think he purchased the neighbour's property and stuff because he didn't want to be overlooked. Obviously, it's, it's more yeah. like an estate. Yeah. And then we built, a, we basically built. A, I think it was like a, a six-car garage, and we realised he had quite a few more than that, so we had to add an extension of another four garage on that and and so on, so it just kept expanding basically. Um, so yeah, it was a good sort of three year project. And you said that you went from like carpenter to joiner. I don't know a lot about that, but what did that lead to for you? So you, you've, you've 
gone through that journey, you've worked on this spectacular house and you've enjoyed making everything by hand, well, what did that lead to after that? Well, what I touched on before about confidence, that, that's where the sort of, I think the age helped as well, because you know, uh, when you get to that sort of late, late 20s age, I think you're becoming like, I think that's when you're probably becoming a man and, yeah. and, you, and you sort of know who you are. And it was just the confidence of, of knowing, you know, that I could build something so spectacular and having the confidence to do so. The guy that I worked with at the time, hat off to him, he taught me a lot. He taught me a lot. Um, and yeah, so it gave me the, the idea, you know, that I could go out and do this for myself. So what did you do when you'd stopped sort of that project? You went into business with someone. Exactly you? that, that was my first business. Um, we, I, we started doing sort of, we got into the commercial side, which for me, I'll touch back on that in a moment, but we were sort of doing uh, like football clubs and, and, and restaurants and things like that, which were very cool projects, you know. We'd, we'd have art, art designers come in and do this amazing artwork on the walls and things like that. And yeah, it was really cool, but, it just wasn't for me. You didn't get that personal touch like you get when you're working for the general public. Yeah. So um, basically, I decided to go back into um, just the domestic world and stick to sort of the extensions that I like doing. Working one on one with the uh, client, exactly instead that. Of, uh, of commercial jobs. And you, so you left that project and that business that you was in a partnership with, and you yeah. moved on to working with someone else, wasn't it? More local. <laughs> A local builder? Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, it was a bricklayer. I struggled. All the other trades I had, like brothers of plumbing heat engineer, son and son, a great electrical crew. Like everyone else was there. But for some reason, I was always struggling with a bricklayer. So it sort of led me into the direction of someone I'd met, you know, throughout the course of having the previous company. And I decided to uh, to go ahead with uh, with him and, and set up again. Uh, and go again now, because I had the bricklayer there. All the other trades were in space. I was hoping it would be a lot less, less stressful. But as, as it happens... You know, that didn't work out, which was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because I finally plucked up the courage to go solely on my own. But what did attract me to him was he had some great um, like business direction in regard to like he things like web, web domains like Builder and Stevenage, things like that. He had some great foresight and it really attracted me to him, um, you know, into looking at how we can market because we used to get a lot of leads for what he was producing from his computer work. But for me, um, they weren't the right leads, you know, because we'd have 10 random leads and they could be time wasted. So for me now, it, was, it gave me the triggers to think, wait a minute, yeah, we want these leads. How do I get these leads marketing? But the right leads from the recommendations and people that are actually serious about doing yeah, yeah, yeah. some work. So you absorbed a lot of knowledge from this bricklayer and it's, you know, you don't always associate a bricklayer with someone who's quite on it with websites and, and you know, Google searches and stuff like that. So... I always remember a guy called Jim Rohn saying that success leaves clues, you've just got to go out and find the clues, you know, and it sounds like that's what you've done with that guy, you absorbed what you could from him, and then you finally had the courage to actually start out on your own. Yeah, exactly, exactly that, because as we know, we, you know, we're running, running the company and stuff like that, it's, it's all the other parts that come to it, you know, which, which I wasn't confident in, which is, you know, the bookkeeping, and, but what I've learned is there's always someone there that can do that yeah. job for you. So you incorporated Vines Construction 2017. What was your vision when you started? Well, as cheesy as it sounds, I literally wanted to take the customer's vision, which I find amazing, um, and you know, give them that dream family home that they want the, you know, the kids and the family to grow in, basically. That, that's what I generally wanted to do, because there's so many, so many families, you know, that it's, it's just so important. Family for me is a big thing. In 2019, uh, lost my late father, AKA Porno Pete. Um, no, he was certainly a character, but um, yeah, it was just amazing that, you know, in 2020, that that's when we managed to get this award. The lovely Amber Jenkins um, from the local BC nominated us. I was literally completely shocked by this because we couldn't go to the awards, which was actually a football club, black tie and whatnot, because... Um, because of COVID, obviously, because of everything that we've all been going through. So it was quite tough and we actually ended up watching the award ceremony on, on a YouTube video. Um, it was live, um, but I remember her getting, giving me the call and saying, pull over, pull over, have a look, little look at this, it's live now. And I, I was honestly just completely taken back because I was up against some, you know, some, some huge companies. Um, so yeah, to sort of, um, I just, yeah, I still now I'm speechless from it. I'm quite happy that I didn't have to do... So it's quite unexpected, oh, I didn't yeah. see it coming. And then when it did come, you was like, oh my God, I, I've sort of beat some people that you admire. 
I just know, yeah. I mean, my brother put into context for me. He done me a beautiful post, and uh, we're very close with my brother. Um, and he just put it into context. You know that a company has spent years trying to sort of get this recognition. It's, it's quite hard for me to take, um, you know, take the uh, take the praise because you know it's just it's just a strange thing. Um, but it, he sort of put it into perspective. And reading it is quite nice rather than hearing someone say it to you because sort of uh, it, it sinks in a bit more, you know. Um, and it sort of spurred me on. And now uh, next year, we've already spoke about potentially uh, applying for two or three more other um, categories for a few more awards. I'm not saying we're going to win them, but it certainly gave me the belief that I could. Yeah. That I could so win those. It's giving you a bit of a boost, almost. Oh, huge! In COVID, and for that to happen, and sort of in my eyes, doing it for my father, I know he'd have been like stupidly proud. He probably wouldn't have told me, but you know, I know he would have been. So yeah, that was massive. How did that boost like the staff and the business? Like that must have lifted you up a bit because twenty twenty was tough. Well, yeah, exactly. That it was just, it was just so elevating. You know, it was just like, it was like a breath of fresh air with everything going on. And then, like we were saying about marketing and stuff like that, that that coincided with the social media we do. Um, obviously, I had the website and I did the videos. So I sort of done a thank you video, which I struggle with. Yeah, I yeah. sort of just set it on myself, you know, on the back of a book to try and get the right height. And, and I'd done it and it, it felt a little bit awkward, but I just wanted, you know, to sort of put a face to the to the award, really, and say thank you to everyone, like wow. the team and obviously the people that nominated us, really. So you, you started in 2017, you know, three years down the line, you've won an award that was unexpected. What sort of advice would you give for people that are like on the cusp of starting a business, or maybe they're a younger business in the same industry. Like, what advice would you give them about sort of growing and, and getting into it? First of all, I would say like it's just all about organisation and, and prepping your day and your week. It's massive for me. Like on a Sunday, I'll take an hour or two out. It's not a cliche at all. Literally, I'll just plan out my week. Don't think too far ahead because it can get daunting. I definitely do set yearly goals. You know, a hundred percent because you've got an, an end goal. The end goal for me is one of the biggest things you need to set because you don't know what you're doing it for. You know why you're doing it. So having them sort of them milestones to get to are great. So. That's what I'd say. But the key for me is being organised and planning. It doesn't always go to plan. The next day probably won't go to that plan at all, but you've got somewhere to start. Yeah. Um, so that, that's what's massive for me. What about sort of growing too quick too soon? Because I sort of made that mistake a little bit. I was, instead of growing it gradually, I was so like eager to grow it quickly. Because like, it's so exciting, isn't it? That's yeah, why. It's so exciting. What, 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 how's that been for you and what, how would you... Uh, yeah, definitely just slow down. I only take on now, I mean, I've run four or five projects and, you know, like big multi pillion van projects, but now I keep it, you know, small, two projects on the go max um, because they get all the attention to detail. And with everything we've had going on with COVID and Brexit, there's such big delays uh, in manufacturing um, products, like it's ridiculous. So you need to be sort of six to eight weeks ahead of the game now right. to even, yeah, to even be finishing projects, you know, and getting them in the dry, especially coming into the winter and things like that. So that's all I would really say. Unless you've got lads in management and you you know and you've got an office there and, and you know even them for me personally to manage their managers and know they're doing how you like to do things because yeah. running a business we're all sort of control freaks we are and we've got certain ways we like to do it and they've not usually another one of you. So I mean, so have there been like any mistakes along the way that have cost you that you've learned from? <laughs> Oh, definitely, hundreds. You only learn. You only learn from your mistakes. There's no doubt about that. And if you don't learn from your mistakes, probably go and back, work back for someone that you know, not being rude at all. But if you're going to keep making the same mistakes, in my opinion, you probably want to rethink running your own company. You know, I've definitely made the same mistakes twice. It hasn't put me off. So please don't be disheartened by that that silly comment. But yeah, for me, it's just uh, is that really? I remember you saying the other day about VOs and extras and things you've committed to that yeah. you, you might not have um, finalised or got writ, signed off. So of VOs say. mean variation audio, just just for the for the tape. Um, and yeah, so it, things can be missed, you know, and it comes to the end of your project. And if you haven't got them signed off as you're going, then it will come to the end. You know, you've got quite a big list that's amounted to a significant amount of money. And then you're trying to get that out of the customer and the budget's not there. Right. Like, just let people know. I write it in all my little contracts that I write and payment plans now. We will let you know um, straight away if there's any increases, you know, in your in your contract mm. cost at all. Get them signed off and then know that, you know, you're not going to come up against this Because you situation. do see that, don't you? Like on Facebook where people have sort of, clients have refused to pay builders because the the cost is more than what they agreed. So what you're saying is get the contracts in place properly first and sort of get them approved as you go, rather than potentially getting knocked a lot of money at the end. Exactly that, and you know, and that's why the commercial world can be brutal. Working around London, anything like that, 
can be brutal. It takes one, you know, one one bad payer, and that can be your company. And it's not just your company; it's all your guys, you know, with their families yeah, and yeah. children. You're literally taking food out of their mouth. So, for me, it's so important to do that. Um, yeah, massively. So, where do you see Vine's construction in the future? That's a big question. That um, yeah, I'd like to just continue, you know, growing the brand, um, keep doing the great jobs we're doing, the great customers we get. Hopefully, hopefully get a few more nominations for some awards. That that would really be amazing for me. That'd be icing on the cake. I'm not going to put too much pressure on that, but yeah, that's where I'd like to be. Really, just continue what we're doing, and, and you know, hopefully inspire some some other people to to, to crack on and, and do it themselves. All right, and I think we've gone through quite a lot. So finally, what advice would you give to again someone who's ready to start out, wants to start out? What what what? How have you got out there the way you have? I would say, in my honest opinion. Um, you know, the building industry is renowned, you know, for, for you know, recreational drugs and drinking and whatever else, you know. And, and for me personally, taking the sobriety route was massive. It means that I can be, you know, on it at all times, as cheesy as that sounds, but I mean, like on every project, nothing's missed, you know, we're getting everything, doing everything to the best of our ability, basically. So that for me, that was, that was a massive thing, um, was doing that. And I would just say to people, you know, um, just do it. What's The worst thing that can happen is, is you'll go back to the job you was doing so and and you've done that for so long you know it's not the end of the world just just go in i would say go all in and give it a good go and just look for your friends and your family and any support you can get because they only want you to do well you know they only want you to do well too and i think that's great advice because matt's already described in this video how he's gone from this to there to there and you've grown every time if you don't take a chance you don't grow uh, I'm sure you know of builders that have been doing the same thing for the past 20 or 30 years and